I started my journey following ley lines, exploring mysterious places where ancient energies converge. I began uncovering stories of folklore and haunted history tied to these locations. Today, I'm back at the very first place that piqued my interest. It all began with a newspaper article, which led me to Peter Underwood's book, Ghosts of the Northwest of England. It tells a story of a spirit who haunts this very house known as Gradwell's Farm. Long ago, a woman fell in love with a monk from this site, only to be tragically rejected. Heartbroken, she threw herself down a 40-foot well. Her life ended in the dark waters below. But her story doesn't end there. In 1958, her ghostly form was hit by a buzz on a nearby road. The driver swore he struck a real person, though nobody was ever found. Locals call her the sad gay woman, and she's still seen wandering around Gradwell's farm. People have spotted her standing in the middle of a hedge along Saint Road, and quietly sitting on a bench along Highfield Road. So I remember coming here in 2012, that was my first time that I'd been to Croston. And uh, one of the reasons I come over here is because while I was researching the layer lines, I found a little story along this layer from this village. And it was in the newspapers, the uh, local newspapers um, from around this area. And it was about a little being, what the locals called Shrewfoot. And walking down the road, where it was seen by a cyclist, which was coming from this direction and going towards the village. Now, unbeknown to him, on the opposite side, coming this way towards me, was a truck coming along the road. Now, what he noticed, because we're coming up to a tree line, and what he noticed was someone jumping around within the bushes, uh, or should I say, within the tree line. And he couldn't make out what it was. And as he looked properly up at this, whatever it was, he saw what he can only describe as uh, this way from this truck coming past. And you can see what I mean by a lot of trucks coming up here. And other vehicles going down. So that happens every so often, and then it goes quiet for a bit. Uh, so you can imagine he's coming down here on his bike. You've got a truck coming from the opposite direction. And he loops up and he sees this little creature. And I'm not sure how it was explained, you know, what, what it looked like, because this was a newspaper cutting. And what he saw was it running, jumping from branch to branch within the trees. And it slow, he slowed down because he wasn't so sure what he was seeing. And this truck was speeding towards him. And he, he did say within this newspaper article, if he hadn't looked up and seen this thing, it would have gone straight down and he would have probably collided with this truck. Now it has been known that this thing has been seen around here, which the locals call Shrewfoot. And every time it has been seen, people have had some sort of good luck like that where it stopped them from having some sort of accident so this goblin or bogger you know it's a, it's a, it's it gives people bad good luck rather than bad luck now we can't get into the up into this side anymore on this side here uh, but at one time in 2012 when i came over i went looking in these woods now it's all fenced off and you can't get in there and there's a new hall that's been built on the old hall, Croston Hall. When I was here, when I went into the land around here, I came across a small church in that area. I'm just gonna lean against this wall. And uh, I saw something moving uh, within this stump of a tree. Uh, at first I thought, you know, it could have been a, a rat or something like that. But when I put my camera down there to have a look, I noticed uh, on the camera after when I got home, uh, 
what looked like a face and an eye looking at me. Uh, I don't know if it was pareidolia, but it was strange how this thing moved. And as I put the camera down towards it, I got this little face looking up at me. Uh, I will show that now because I've still got that photo from 2012. So there's not only that from around this area, we've got, um, there's a phantom white lady, uh, which I did explain about at the beginning of the video. Now we're, we're going to end up walking down to where they built a stone circle. And it's strange how the stone circle, when I first came in in 2012, wasn't there. So it's a recent addition to the village. And it's strange and it's actually been built on this ley line. So I'm going to walk through the woods and uh, let you see what this um, stone circle looks like. So this is a stone circle over in the distance of what's been built along this line going from a cross when you come into Croston and uh, as you can see this here is a new stone circle that runs from the cross in the centre of Croston it seems to go through this stone circle and then it ends up going over there where I was talking about Shreefoot and where he'd seen. So this is what interested me at the time of uh, coming to Croston uh, and having a look whilst researching this ley line that went through here and finding out these other things that had happened around here at the time what brought more of an interest in looking into ley lines and then I stretched that a little bit further going towards uh, Winter Hill and, and the area on Angles out more, more with uh, Round Law from and then going all the way into um, just, just near Southport where we'll go and head over into that area and uh, have a look around that area as well where I believe the beginning of this uh, ley line start. Uh, it gets over to Roundloaf where it ends uh, on up to there and then it does go a little bit further to another cross on Oakham Moor which is strange how it, it goes from one area to another going through crosses as it's going along. So yeah we will be heading over to um, Churchtown uh, and having a look around that area but I just wanted to show you this uh, this stone circle that had been built here um, fairly new as you can see now this is the new stone circle uh, that has been built here
While we were in church town, we took a stroll through the beautiful Victorian park and spent some time with the many birds they have there. After that, we headed to a spot I believe might be the start of a ley line that runs all the way from Church Town to Roundloaf and beyond. Right here, there once stood a standing stone, which was later to moved to a nearby hall. In its place, this obelisk was erected. I believe the obelisk now redirects the energy to where the original standing stone rest in its new home. What's even stranger is that directly along the ley line towards Southport, there are two more tall statues, both topped with sun symbols. One at the front of the pier, one at the middle of the pier at the side. And another strange coincidence is that the sun sets at the end of the pier. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the like button and share it with your friends. Subscribe to the channel for more great content and drop a comment below to let me know your thoughts or suggestions. I'll see you in the next one.